know that at all This week of Sino at the Top Movie, we're talking about the original animes that I like, it, but I also understand that there's nothing much to say about them, so instead I'll probably be talking about all ideas from it I, and thus you as well, can steal for your projects. Prepare for this to be the main theme of many Sino at the Top Movies in the far future, by the way. If we get enough ideas, I'll maybe even try to combine them into something. Who knows? So the first on our list is Prima Doll, an original 12-episode anime that was made by Bibbery Animation Studios that answers what would have happened if Chobits were a musical and placed in World War One. Well, okay, I'm being a bit reductive here. It's basically a story of a maid cafe maintained by dolls. Sentient humanoid robots developed by this obviously Japan-inspired nation for the purposes of war. Our main heroes belong to the second generation of these dolls, meaning that they're capable of emotions, can command younger generations, and are basically humans for all intents and purposes to the point where they have to censor their naked bodies via strategically placed props and body parts. Why would you need nipples and vaginas on battle bots that connect to other battle bots via radio signals is up to you people to ponder, but yes, the whole point of the story is that war is bad. It's not even that much of a criticism, really. War is bad, and using what are basically child slaves as your army commanders doesn't really make you look like a good guy in this conflict. And the point is that after the war, they have to do something about these robots, and one ex-army commander decided that maybe the things that are basically humans for all intents and purposes deserve human rights, and thus he created the Doll Cafe. There are also people who would want to continue waging war for some reason, and the main heroine, Haizakura, is obviously the key to everything they either want or would want, and it all ends with evil Haikagura and Haizakura battling it out. Though the story is... Uh, let's diplomatically call it generic, there are some interesting moments in the show, mainly the subversion of expectations in regards to Haizakura's past. It is, generally speaking, a very typical anime of this genre, similar in spirit to Zombieland, Saga, and other of the sorts, so if you like this sort of cute girls doing cute things anime, you'll mostly like it. Now, the fun part for me was the whole setting based around it, and the weird and wacky implications the introduction of this tech implies, so what we have is basically World War One, where Japan and other countries have access to robots and other walkers that are able to be used on the battlefield. They are common enough that they serve alongside human battalions, and are autonomous enough that, at the very least the commander level, are humans for all intents and purposes, but they apparently don't have human rights. Yet. Boy, the future discussions about human rights are going to be confusing in this universe, and as for tactics, we are currently only developing things they would consider average battlefield tactics. But yes, the dolls are pretty much the thing I would steal from this anime. Imagine combining it with Saga of Tanya's magical forces. That would have been pretty fun. The next anime is Shinom Bakumatsu Bad Boys, or Buchigere, an original 12-episode anime made by Geno Studio and Twin Engine that does a very... specific story that is hard to really explain properly. Basically, it's about the Shinsengumi, but everything about them looks and feels like something that should have probably happened at that samurai land of Naruto. In fact, if you remove the American presence in the story, it might as well be something from Naruto, for all intents and purposes. Basically, leaders of the Shinsengumi were killed by a giant skeleton, and so the surviving cripple gathers some people who were to be killed and gives them a choice. Become the leader of Shinsengumi in name and wield their magical katanas, or die. All but one choose the former. And then they have to fight a group of magical Sonnojoi nationalists that want to expel the Americans using the power of the dead. Yes, this is that sort of Japanese production, the stupid one, and it is glorious, albeit extremely rushed to the point of it being a bullet point version of a bigger series. You see, one of the biggest things I like about Japanese media in general is how nonchalant they are about using their own and others' history simply for the sake of name recognition. The creators of the show wanted a magical delinquent story set in Japanese civil war with a special police force of moderate fame, and so they've basically created magical delinquent samurais, disregarding pretty much anything about the real Shinsen Gumi. You rarely see something like this in Western media, and when they do it, they tend to use historical figures that would garner the least amount of backlash. To put this into perspective, imagine an American cartoon that would depict important historical characters from the CSA as heroic and epic figures fighting against some satanic separatist cult in the name of America and its glory. That would be the American equivalent of Buchigire. Is it any wonder that I will steal the setting and the premise for it? Bakumatsu period is rarely if ever used as a setting or a faction idea, which is really a shame, because it's the period of history that could have been used to do all sorts of wacky and fun stuff, like take the concept of a steam musketeer from Cabaneri, combine it with the Princess Principal's steampunk world, maybe even add steampunk works of the 19th century overall as well, and finally add the magical bullshit of this anime, and we'd have a weird split Japan when there is an ongoing battle between progressive technology of the Empire and the nationalist magic of the Shogunate. Yeah, I have nothing to end this song. Subscribe to my Discord and Telegram channels for a list of ideas I'll steal or something. <laughs>